There is much more to e-commerce than just buying or selling something on the internet. E-payment and delivery are increasingly becoming an integral part of the e-commerce mix as it can make or break a transaction. With the internet as a trade intermediary of the future, how are e-payment and delivery systems revolutionizing the marketing landscape? I'm Rod Depomuceno and this is Insight. To discuss the e-payment process, we have with us Paolo Azola, Chief Operating Officer and Managing Director of PayMaya. Good evening, uh, Paolo, and welcome to the show. Now, tell us a little bit more about PayMaya and uh, how uh, it comes or how it gets involved in the, the whole e-commerce mix. Um, first of all, um, it's a joint venture between the Digital Innovations Unit of PLDT Smart, which is called Voyager, mm -hmm. as well as the um, uh, largest startup incubator in emerging markets, which is Rocket Internet. Mm -hmm. So our um, payments expertise over the last 15 years, as well as our expertise in building e-commerce uh, businesses, mm -hmm. has given us the possibility of trying to crack the e-payments, uh, let's say, code. Mm -hmm. Now, you're saying try to crack that e-payment code. Uh, has there been difficulties or challenges when it comes to uh, um, e-payment and, and e-commerce in general? So when you look at um, e-commerce and, and where it started in developed markets, for example, the eBays and Amazons and so on, um, it did take them a little while to get to a stage where everyone pays on their credit card, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. um, mm -hmm. Well, in the Philippines, we're also undergoing the same kind of evolution, right? Mm -hmm. We started off as a almost only cash on delivery type um, uh, e-commerce yes. structure or network. Yes. Um, and now we're evolving on a, an increasing basis towards e-payments. Yeah. So I think it's mostly that businesses are catching up to consumers. Consumers spend a lot of time on the internet mm -hmm. and they do want to buy stuff, right? So if they mm -hmm. spend a lot of time on the internet and they also want to consume or buy stuff, mm -hmm. then they also want to be able to pay. If you look at the, um, the early uh, e-commerce mm -hmm. uh, proposers in, uh, in emerging markets and specifically in the mm -hmm. Philippines, it used to be as classified ads, you know, I'd like to sell right. this particular mobile phone online, mm -hmm. um, and then we meet up and I exchange cash with you. Yes. That obviously is cumbersome for the individuals because, you know, not only do I have to meet you face to face, mm -hmm. uh, but it was also pretty cumbersome for the uh, for the e-commerce the e platform because it means that none of the, I see none of the transactions actually go through my website. Mm -hmm. um, it actually means that I'm just a classified website. In a nutshell, this is uh, PayMaya is like uh, a ver It's like a is it like a debit card? There are there are two steps to it. The first of all is um, how do I get to a stage where I actually have the account, right? Mm -hmm. And that's essentially as simple as downloading an app. Mm -hmm. Anyone who has a smartphone in today's world is able to download an app. Okay. And PayMaya essentially is you download an app, mm -hmm. and the credential you need to download the app is your name and your mobile phone. And I think all of us know our name yeah. and our mobile phones by yeah. now. Um, at which point you're uh, you're given a virtual uh, credit card with mm -hmm. which, sorry, a virtual prepaid card with mm -hmm. which you're able to make payments. Critical to that is the loading of the card, right? right, right. Um, and we've partnered with some of the largest establishments in the Philippines, such mm -hmm. as uh, Sam Robinson's 7-Eleven and our own Smart Padala Centers, right. um, to be able to make that as seamless and easy as possible. How many people in the Philippines, for example, have uh, a card, whether it's a, whether it's a debit card or a credit card, or a, a payment facility. So, out of let's say approximately 100 million Filipinos, there are only about 20 million unique bank accounts. Out of those 20 million unique bank accounts, only 5 million have unique credit cards. Mm -hmm. And with the fact that we do this online and with very little, uh, let's say, time spent by the person being able to do this, but also maintaining the same level of safety and security in that particular account. Mm -hmm. exactly. We make sure that people who do not want to go to a bank or who have been turned away by a bank are actually able to enter the financial system. Right. So for us, it's almost a financial inclusion mission mm -hmm. to get that 5 million credit cards and that 20 million bank accounts to a much higher number. Uh, what kind of growth are we seeing here? I mean, like for example, from the day, uh, uh, when, when did you exactly start? Uh, so we started Paymaya in the, third, the fourth quarter of last year, last year. so 2015. Mm -hmm. are, you, are you seeing uh, kind of exponential growth? Uh, yes, with, uh, and uh, not right only are we already? seeing exponential growth, but our plans are even bigger than that for the future. So mm -hmm. um, I can't disclose to you uh, exact numbers, but yeah. we are right now in the six figures in terms of account holders. Um, and we are looking at being in the seven figures sometime this year. Wow. How is this affecting marketing strategies for companies, for example, which offer um, 
uh, their products both online and on the shelves. Uh, we're enabling, uh, together with our sister company Voyager and together with Takdis, our hosted storefront, um, we're enabling businesses that used to not have the possibility of selling online mm -hmm. to now sell online. So for example, you're a small or medium enterprise mm -hmm. and you'd like to make a, um, a sale to someone online, right? Mm -hmm. You don't know how to set up your website. Mm -hmm. You don't know how to accept payments and so on. So Tech This, which is a company of, uh, of Voyagers, allows SMEs to uh, build their own hosted storefront, mm -hmm. uh, their own uh, store online. Mm -hmm. um, and PayMai enables those merchants to accept payments. So yeah. we go as, as far as logistics companies themselves, so mm -hmm. enabling the actual sending of the product so to it's the not just So it's not just the, the, the card, you're, you're actually helping, I guess, the storefront on, on the web. One more way that, we, that I think um, payments enable businesses or online payments enable businesses is we, we started off with a discussion when we said classifieds and payments being done cash face to face between two people. Obviously, if you're a company that is selling online, you don't know how many sales you're actually making uh, if, you're, if, that, if that is the case, right? Mm, yeah. Or how much goes through your website. Yes. On the other hand, with online payments, you're in control of all of the data that goes through your website. Right. So that's yeah. an extremely, extremely interesting proposition in terms of big data for mm. these companies. Now, how is this uh, impacted on the, on the sales of the merchant side? Well, so if you think about uh, the time Filipinos spend online, mm. and most of all, the time Filipinos spend on their mobile phone, Right? Mm -hmm. um, by enabling them to transact online or on mm -hmm. their mobile directly, mm -hmm. that means that it, we increase uh, the possibility of these merchants to get to customers a lot more, right? Okay, and finally, security. Now, a lot of people uh, sometimes are still afraid. Uh, they have this fear and phobia of, 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 of working in the internet or, or transacting the internet because of, you know, they feel that like it's going to be hacked. When we think about, um, about payments, um, we think that maybe a, uh, an online payment is something that's risky. Mm -hmm. Isn't cash risky? I carry cash around. Isn't that more risky than having it in an account where I can actually recover the money if my card gets stolen? Right. I think that's a question of education. I think more and more Filipinos are understanding that. And mm -hmm. that's why the adoption of mobile payments, I think, over the next two or three years is going to explode. Now, after the payment process comes the delivery of goods. How integral is delivery in e-commerce? More when Insight returns. We'll be right back. The entire promise of e-commerce could die with the logistics as a nightmare. Right, if, right. If, if you don't get the goods delivered right on time and as, and as the customers expect it. We're back on Insight to discuss the e-commerce delivery system. We have with us Ms. Gloria Estebaya, Vice President for Customer Service and Business Intelligence for Air21. Good evening, Yayo. Welcome to the show. Air21 is known mainly as a traditional cargo and freight forwarding uh, firm. Uh, how, how is it evolving uh, in the digital age? Air21 is basically a total logistics solutions provider. Emergence of e-commerce right now, mm -hmm. we have business intelligence and analytics as a tool to, for us to uh, cope up with the expectations of e-commerce. You know, mm -hmm. the entire promise of e-commerce could die with the logistics as a nightmare. Right, if, right. If, if you don't you get the goods delivered right on time and as, and as the customers expect it. All People right. would love the ease and convenience of doing online shopping for about 15 minutes, but mm. if it would take another 15 days right. to get the goods delivered, that's a complete logistics nightmare. So yeah. that's uh, basically the goal of an expert logistics company is to deliver it right on time and as promised to the customers. Now, does Air 21 get involved uh, in the, I guess, the, the digital part, the internet part? Uh, and, and not just focus on the physical aspect of, of delivering? Does it Actually, we are partnering with uh, e-commerce um, uh, retailers mm -hmm. and um, distribution centers. Lazada is one of our customers, mm -hmm. and we have our own platform as well, mm -hmm. and uh, some customers can book via uh, online via mm -hmm. to Air Freight through, 100. Through yes. your site? Yes, through, your through site. our oh, site. All right. Now, so is it safe to say then that um, the delivery part uh, of the transaction is becoming much more, much more than a simple function of, of 
bringing the physical goods to the customer. Is it going beyond that now? Yes, definitely um, since e-commerce is exploding, mm. so therefore logistics has to be disruptive in our strategies on how to make our operations cost effective. We mm. don't want to drive away e-commerce or online shoppers with the prices that we are charging our customers. Right. So therefore, we keep a good balance of our cost and our efficiency level. Mm -hmm. When I say efficiency level, we keep a close watch on how we are coping up with the expectations of our customers mm -hmm. and how we are optimizing our resources. Mm -hmm. When we optimize our resources, that keeps us very lean in terms of our cost and therefore our customers would be uh, would benefit from the prices that they have because right. they have the value for their money. Yeah, how much, how much uh, increase? Now, it doesn't have to be a specific number, maybe perhaps in percentage. Uh, have you had in terms of transactions ever since the dawning of e-commerce? Actually increased exponentially. Exponentially, okay. Right, mm -hmm. because, um, well, everybody's going online right now. Everybody's on their fo Facebook mm -hmm. doing mm -hmm. mobile um, uh, mobile shopping, yeah. uh, mobile transactions, and um, actually from last year, it has not even doubled, it has tripled. Wow. How important, how key is uh, uh, a del good delivery system to, uh, I guess, maintain customer loyalty? It is very important, especially for the first uh, experience mm -hmm. of the customer that um, we deliver on time and efficiently. Mm -hmm. And through this experience, it would keep these customers coming back. So the retailers will have a repeat customer and it, it would help them earn more customers. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the logistics firms, I think, really have to focus on the timeliness and efficiency of the delivery. Yeah, and, and conversely, if the delivery system is not good, it could have a, a negative impact. Again, as on, I said, it's, gonna, yeah. it's going to be a nightmare yeah. for now, the customers. Let me ask you this. Is, is uh, having a good e-commerce system, an e-payment system, and as well as a good delivery system, an effective marketing strategy, or do you think it's, it's a must-have? It's, it's not even a, an optional thing anymore. It is, I think it is a must-have and um, uh, collaboratively it would also help the logistics arm okay, um, increase its efficiency level mm -hmm. because one of the challenges that we have in mm -hmm. the delivery system right now is cash on delivery. Right. Okay, and uh, when, it, when I was mentioning a while ago about efficiency level, mm -hmm. when I say efficiency level, we want to make a successful delivery on the first attempt. Mm -hmm. If we make several attempts doing the delivery, that makes the way we're doing things more mm -hmm. costly. Mm -hmm. So that makes the entire chain bad. Mm -hmm. So we want to make it uh, right the first time. So therefore, there are initiatives from our end to do proactive notification to the customers. Mm -hmm. We do SMS mm -hmm. if we are on the way to deliver, so right. that's especially for COD payments, mm -hmm. so they could prepare the, the, the payment. But however, mm -hmm. still, that's still a risk. We want to do away with the cash payments. And finally, if you were um, talking to a, a marketing director, for example, uh, of perhaps a, a growing company, and they, they'd like to get um, into this uh, system, of, of having full, a full delivery system, what would you be telling that marketing director? Okay, um, for on the logistics arm, mm -hmm. we would be able to keep your customers informed. Uh, tracking and tracing would be mm -hmm. easy because of the technology that we have mm -hmm. and we deliver time definite. Mm -hmm. um, we have different options. It could be different, uh, different delivery on a specific day that you want, mm -hmm. same day delivery on a specific window time that you want. Now, what's the outlook for the e-payment and delivery systems in the country? Let's find out when Insight returns. Whether or not you're actually directly or indirectly impacted by e-commerce, I think everyone should kind of prepare towards that mm -hmm. one way or another. And we're back now to give his insight on the e-payment and delivery systems. Joining us is Roland Ramirez, Managing Director of Data and Insights for Solvento Philippines. Roland, welcome to the show. Uh, we did have a discussion with, uh, with, with Yayo Estabaya mm -hmm. of Air21, and she's saying that 
the the proportion of their deliveries mm -hmm. based on online transactions, which are or, or a, re a result of online transactions, is actually exploding. Uh, will retailers have to adjust their 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 marketing strategies as well as their delivery um, strategies? I think uh, the the pace of uh, growth is going to be in pockets, not mm -hmm. necessarily you know fast growth for everyone. It's not for everyone. Mm -hmm. Let me put it that. Uh, it's that not for every retailer. It's, and exactly, merchant. exactly. The pace in the volume of uh, growth is not going to be for every retailer out there. I think what's going to happen is that uh, growth is going to mostly come from you know uh, things like electronics clothing things like that but uh, for for things like um, you know consumer goods mm -hmm. things we put on our face you know mm -hmm. things like that mm -hmm. things we ingest you know things mm -hmm. like you buy in uh, supermarkets and right. you know drug stores mm -hmm. perhaps not that yet mm -hmm. but you know on things like um, you know consumer electronics as I said uh, it's going to be booming uh, in mm. the next few years. In mm. uh, to your point about uh, you know should marketers and should retailers actually adjust? The answer is yes. I think uh, whether or not you're actually directly or indirectly impacted by e-commerce, I think everyone should kind of prepare towards that mm -hmm. in one way or another. There is a lot of uh, apprehension still on the part of, uh, of consumers. Mm -hmm. um, Partly because of, I guess, technology, perhaps the limited bandwidth that they have, or the limited devices that they, they have, or perhaps the, the limited payment facility. Not everyone has a PayPal, mm -hmm. not everyone has a credit card, yeah. uh, and perhaps also the, the security aspect of it. Do you think that all of these factors uh, will have an impact on? On, on the growth of e-commerce and I think a lot of people actually are engaging uh, a lot already mm -hmm. online uh, whether it be consumption of uh, media to you know trading mm -hmm. um, you know so I think everyone you know if we spend uh, on uh, on an average week I think the normal Filipino spends about 30 to 40 mm -hmm. hours mm -hmm. a week so that's eight hours so we almost work as much as mm -hmm. we actually spend our time online, online okay. if you can imagine that. Wow. So, um, what I'm trying to say is that um, you know this is going to be big in the future. You're right. Mm -hmm. um, you know uh, we are going to be stifled by things like infrastructure, mm -hmm. the internet speed, the road infrastructure, the yeah. traffic. All mm -hmm. those things are going to be impacting. So I think uh, the hunger, the the demand is actually there. Mm -hmm. It's just that you know the technology in you know, infrastructure is not ready yet. So as soon as that actually becomes ready, I think the demand is going to follow suit. Uh, so do you think that it kind of balances out anyway? Like uh, perhaps this e-commerce aspect of it is just one of, will be one of the ways that people will do uh, transactions uh, and, and not be the main thing? I think. One of the advantages of uh, e-commerce, not just in the Philippines, but uh, even in developed nations, is that it offers the uh, ease of shop. Mm -hmm. You know, it gives you a chance to actually compare products with a click of a button. It's more about the choices and more about the speed because, you know, uh, truth be told, I think everyone lives a more busy life now, whether mm -hmm. wherever you come from. Do mm -hmm. uh, you see any... I guess disadvantage. Everyone's talking about advantages of having mm -hmm. uh, an e-commerce e-commerce system and uh, a website where you can offer your goods and, and services and and a delivery system. Uh, is there a downside to all of this for insofar as a business is concerned? I think that's and, one uh, huge off-putting factor. Uh, you know the logistics, the uh, the limited capability of uh, technology. If you look at it that way, then yes, mm -hmm. you are going to stop at your tracks and not. Uh, you know, uh, find an opportunity mm -hmm. out of that. But I think the optimistic people actually, or businessmen, will see that as an opportunity to actually, okay, uh, in the Philippines, I imagine uh, building an online store is actually much easier, much faster, cheaper in a way, mm -hmm. uh, to operate, to uh, get off the ground mm -hmm. compared to a brick and mortar store. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's less red tape, you can imagine. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, things like that make it more attractive, mm -hmm. uh, I should say. So, um, so there are upsides, there are downsides, just like anything. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, companies like Paymaya, for example, or let's see, these, these payment systems, no? do you think that uh, these type of businesses will grow? The growth is actually going to be there. Now, I think what's key is that for the next few years, when all these tech companies actually start to build mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, infrastructure, they should as well spend time to earn the trust 
of the consumers mm -hmm. because security is a big thing here in the right, Philippines. Right. If that is actually proven to be a non-issue, then I think more and more people will get encouraged to actually uh, do online trading. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to ask you to, uh, to make a projection here. Do you think that perhaps in the next uh, uh, 10 years or so, uh, perhaps more than 50% of transactions will be uh, online? What it does is actually open just two new channels of trade. Mm -hmm. I think um, people are not going to shift necessarily their spend from you know, offline to online, mm. you know, so one is to one. If anything, I'll probably be spending more, you know, so I'm gonna be spending as much mm. in store. Mm. Because they still like the, the shopping exactly, experience, they, right? You know, Filipinos are a bit sensorial in that mm. sense, that uh, we want to taste, we want to smell. The point is, uh, you know, that is not going to disappear. I think it's part of our culture. It's part of who we are. You know, we like the bonding aspect of uh, shopping together as well. I think that's not going to go away, obviously. So I think it's, if anything, it offers, um, you know, more opportunities to trade up people to actually try new things, um, you know, uh, new products, uh, more expensive products, new technology, things mm. like that. So it's a way for us to be a little bit more adventurous mm -hmm. uh, when buying things, you know, mm. uh, because it offers a little bit uh, ease of shop and uh, more choices. Well, uh, pardon the pun, but I think I, I'll buy that. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much, uh, Roland Ramirez. Of course, this is Inside, the program that tackles the latest developments in the dynamic world of marketing. I'm Rodney Pumuseno. See you again next week.